-hmm. and recording yeah, sure. has begun so it's all you all right well uh good evening everybody thank you for coming to the meeting tonight hope everyone had a good thanksgiving and everything so i guess we can jump right into it and get started with attendance so uh yeah we'll go through by states and when night when you're called up uh go ahead and uh, instead of doing something you'd like to learn since it's December and the year's ending off, you can uh, mention something that you've learned this year, something cool that you saw or something cool that you did. So we can start off with New York. Is anyone here from New York tonight? I'm here. I don't know if... Oh, go ahead. I don't know if Clyde's here, but I think Kelly's here, right? Kelly? Yep. All this right. is Kelly. So, uh, yeah, so was there anything cool that you learned or did this past year? Uh, I think uh, the coolest thing I learned um, this year was at the conference and uh, just seeing how uh, GIS can not only be applied, like, outside, but, like, inside with all the, what whatever it was called, the ArcGIS, the inside how they were doing it in buildings and it, importing it into different campuses, like college campuses and work campuses. All right. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I found that super interesting too. All right. Um, so I guess we can move on unless, uh, Kelly, if you had anything to say. That's kind of funny. I was going to actually say the same thing. So. Oh, well. All right. So I guess we can go on to the next day. Is anyone here? from Louisiana tonight? I'm here. Uh, let me see if Miss Fran or Hunter are here. I believe not. Anyway, yeah, so um, as far as the conference, I think that was a highlight, but um, after the conference, um, we had GIS day. And so basically, usually I hang out and I do story maps with Miss Fran. We teach kids how to how to work story maps. That's why she loves it so much and I understand. But this year we did a giant map activity. And so we had a huge Louisiana map and we go through the census data regarding population for each cities in the eighteen fifties, nineteen fifties and twenty ten. And we were just like comparing stuff. So I learned, I don't know how much the kids learned, but I learned a lot about Louisiana that I did not know. It was pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So I guess we can then move on to Tennessee. Is anyone here from Tennessee tonight? Let's see. I think I'm the only one here tonight. Um, you got Austin so here. I just want to start by saying this year has been a complete – I don't know. I don't know how to – it. sorry, describe it, but just a complete – it's given me an understanding of the GIS world um, by being able to connect with people in the conference. And so – I've learned that not only the technology I use and the data I interpret and everything that, you know, I do with GIS online, you know, that it, it has an impact in my community, but not only does it have an impact in my community, what we're doing as youth is setting the trend for um, not only states that we live in, but the countries we live in and ultimately across the world. And so just being able to learn that what we're doing now will make a big difference in the future. Nice, nice. That's really cool. So I guess now, if you're uh, uh, Austin, awesome, do you have anything? Did you have anything to contribute? Yeah. Good evening, everybody, and thanks for everybody for joining. I know this is a tough time of year as semesters are wrapping up, so good luck to everyone as they're finishing finals and semester tests and we'll, we'll, whatever life throws at you towards the end of the year. Um, I did want to give a quick shout out to our health summit subcommittee. Uh, they successfully um, submitted their application for the 2020 health summit. So we are anxiously awaiting uh, confirmation or, you know, a, a, an update from the team to see if we'll be selected to present 
at next year's Hill Summit. So, all right. So, uh, I guess then we can uh, move on to North Carolina. So I'm here, and Mr. Ray's here too. Uh, I don't know if you had anything you wanted to say, Mr. Ray. Um, you know, I I've, I've just thoroughly enjoyed. Um, learning and connecting with new people and I mean I know we're talking about GIS day in a few minutes but um, again just some of those connections and we had our maps out and so people who thought they had nothing to learn about what 4-H does were able to come and kind of connect but then they were also involved you know at deep levels with some of the content that you guys were mapping but from different perspectives like so it was really cool to um to to talk with people who are just kind of in their different fields of of, in spheres of influence and how they are also uh interested well they use gis every day but also interested to learn how youth are using um gis for projects that they hadn't but were relevant to their work. Yeah, I guess just to, I guess kind of build off of that, I did enjoy GIS Day 2, and uh, I guess on the lines of what, the guy, what some of the other guys said, uh, the conference was a big part, I guess, of this year. I had a little really good time with the other guys and everyone else who was there. And, of course, our GS indoors I found really cool. <laughs> and um, I guess other than that, uh, this past year, uh, I guess my junior year right now, I'm a senior, so this past year, I took uh, AP Human Geography, and uh, we did, we actually, there's a whole unit where we did a lot of stuff with G- with ArcGIS and different things like that, and I just thought that was really cool, seeing that, I guess, integrate into the classroom that I have, I've never seen that before in, like, middle school or high school, so I thought that was cool how they use that to analyze different things, and so, yeah. Uh, all right, so I guess we can move on to Nevada. I don't know if it, is anyone here from Nevada tonight. That sounds lit. I mean, I just wanted to chime in. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess it looks like no one from Nevada is here tonight, so that's fine. I guess we can move on. All right, so... Uh, we'll move on to the state updates and projects. So, uh, yeah. So go ahead, and we'll go. We'll go down. You can talk about what you're doing in your club, and uh, especially what you did for GIS Day if your club did anything. So we can start with New York. Uh, yeah. So, what you? What are you guys up to? I would just say that. Um from the adults and we're working on building some infrastructure to have a state GIS team. So looking at how we recruit youth for the uh, national team, you know, do we do a competition like Tennessee? Do we, um, you know, what we're gonna do with that? And then what projects we can work on as at the state level to get youth ready to come on to the national team. So I know Charles and I have been uh, working with our campus partner on building that. All right, that sounds good. Jeff, did you have anything else to say? I don't have anything else to say. All right, All right that's fine. So uh, I guess we can then move on to Louisiana. So what's go- what's going on? I mean, GIS Day was lit. Um, <clears throat> according to the 4-H Tech Club, this Saturday we're going to meet and we're going to choose on a, hopefully a health-related project. And uh, So last, last time we met was November, the first weekend of November, and... Um, we came up with like six different ideas for a community service project and this weekend we're going to discuss about all and um, we're going to choose one and hopefully if it's health related we can 
come to the health summit with that. That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Is that it? All right. So, um, I guess, yeah, then we can move on to Tennessee. So, Ben, do you have anything interesting? I sure do. Thanks for asking. So, um, one of the major things we did this past month, actually, it happened this past week, was a um, interest meeting for all younger um, students in Unicoi County um, to join our GIS GPS team in uh, the county. And so we had around 10 new interested um, students and they're all very eager. So we're actually planning to set up a survey system where they can go online and um, select the things they're interested in. That way we can go ahead and start forming miniature teams um, and focus our way down to doing um, two projects, one for the junior, junior high team, which will be the younger folks, and then the senior team, which will be those of us who are on the national team. And then there's two or three that have been previously on the junior high team that will have to high school. So um, we're, we're really focusing down onto the state competition now, and we're going to try to narrow down um, our interest and what we want to do this next uh, few months as we call it our busy season, getting ready for the state competition. Awesome. Yeah, that's really Cool. All right. So now North Carolina. So I can talk a little bit about what we did. So this past GIS, well, sorry, excuse me. This past GIS day, we went over. Uh, they had an event, and we were able to put up our maps uh, that we took to the UC and put them out so other attendees could see and check them out. We also had a table for 4-H, kind of promoting the club, talking about talking about what we do and different products that we've been working on. And we also promoted our um, K through, or not K through, but our 4-H uh, GIS map competition uh, that we're having between students. And so, yeah, so that's uh, that's about what we did for uh, GIS day. We also I also got to connect with some other uh, people about um, maybe starting an ArcGIS indoors project for my high school. and getting that working with Wake County. Yo, that sounds awesome. If you could do that for your school. Yeah. <laughs> I was I always thought like after seeing that presentation at the UC, I was like, man, RGS indoors. I need one of that. I need something like that in my school. Like honest, <laughs> honestly. But, it's funny you mentioned that. We were thinking about the same thing for the Unifil County team. Yeah. Honestly, that'd be really cool if lots of schools and campuses started doing it. Exactly. And even if we could get a like uh, app integration to where students could download an app and navigate their school the first few weeks when they're trying to figure out classes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And also, yeah, uh, yes, shout out to Esther. She gave a bunch of cool – Esri swag for us to give out and at the event. And, so, uh, and Charlie also suggested that um, he he was concerned about whether or not uh, ArcGIS indoors was something that was at a level they could provide for us yet. I and mean, we'll still have to to figure out kind of what next steps would be. But he suggested that we participate not, participate in the community mapping um, page on um, on Esri's website, and that there are a lot of campus maps on there as well. Um, so, uh, so maybe as a first step. Uh, doing that and then and then moving on from that and I mean already referenced it we also have our um, North Carolina middle school high school mapping competition um, we host that and so I, I'm sure some of the others of you are I think I heard Ben reference that but um, 
Yeah, so we're doing that. And then uh, I haven't verified whether or not our blog's been published yet, but we submitted our blog for publication to the climate office. And then I feel like there's, some, oh, we um, tell them about the map project we did with the tobacco outlets. Oh yeah, so this past meeting, uh, yeah, this past month's meeting, we uh, decided to, as we had some new members in the club, we decided to do a quick project, or we started working on a project uh, for uh, tobacco for tobacco and uh, yeah, tobacco outlets near elementary schools. And so, what we did is basically the whole idea was to teach different skills and how to do analysis using ArcGIS Online. And so, what we did is we got data from Wake County of the location of different of all the public elementary schools in the county and then we mapped out from data we from other data we found of uh, uh, where was it from again the tobacco outlet data use post center data yeah the po yeah from the post center from uh, and so what we we use that to map out out uh, tobacco outlets around the area and what we did is we made polygons around those outlets for I think it was 15 minute. We did uh, a one mile buffer. Oh yeah. Well, buffer. yeah. So yeah, we did one mile buffers around those tobacco outlets and we mapped them out in. Well, around the, we, around the schools, around the schools. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah and we mapped them we out. Around, yeah. And we mapped them out around the schools and uh, yeah, performed uh, analysis to find locations where most tobacco outlets were within those one mile radius of, el of elementary schools. Sounds like North Carolina has been really busy this month. What? And then, and then I think of note, we also, I shouldn't say, we should, en we enriched the buffers with poverty data. Um, because we were really interested in seeing if there was a, so as Amin said, this was to help gear up, like just give some hands-on skills for some of the newer folks, but we also wanted to um, answer a few important questions. And we had a hypothesis that there was a disparity uh, between uh, the density um, of tobacco outlets around high poverty schools versus low poverty schools and the the disparity how how stark was the disparity i mean uh oh i i wasn't able to stay towards the end of the meeting so oh, you didn't say sure. yeah it is it's it's overwhelming um just how so there were as many as 30 outlets within a mile of a high poverty elementary school, where as a low poverty elementary school, many had zero, some had only one or two. Um, and so it was really, uh, it, it definitely verified our hypothesis, let's put it that way. Well, all right, so Nevada's not here, so we'll uh, leave them blank for tonight. Well, I guess from there we can move on to the health summit. So I know Austin, you talked a little bit about it, but do you just want to mention a couple other updates that you had about the health summit? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Amin. Um, so right now we're kind of in a, a holding pattern. We'll hear back on December 9th, so next Monday. We'll hopefully, and usually they extend that out, uh, just as an FYI to the committee that's on the call. They've sometimes pushed that a little bit closer to Christmas, but hopefully we'll hear, hear back next Monday. Once we get a confirmation or not, either way it goes, uh, that'll be a pivotal point for us to begin working on our presentation. We have, uh, we have a great health subcommittee task force that has been very innovative in taking kind of the three years of project material that we've developed and is really wanting to help grow it and, uh, you know, uh, kind of remodel it to include a little more GIS. Um, anyone that is interested in joining this effort, it's an open invitation. Uh, you don't have to you know, sign up. You just have to literally let me know you want to be on. I've, I've extended that invitation multiple times. So please let me know if you 
have not been engaged and want to be engaged, let me know. Uh, you can serve in a couple different capacities. One could be, you know, joining the task force to kind of work on the content, advising our, you know, working with our group to kind of help shape the content. Uh, another capacity uh, would be an opportunity to, to potentially uh, present in DC. Uh, that is contingent on, you know, us getting accepted and then funding being available um, unless funding, um, unless you have a funding source through your state that would, that would help or if you're near DC. Um, so please let me know if anyone's interested. You can serve in, you know, any capacity, any, you know, anyone's welcome. So please join. Um, it's a great opportunity to meet uh, youth from across the nation. Um, it's another opportunity for us to uh, kind of promote our group and our team to people. We've had a couple states, well, one state, particularly Maryland, that we, and Maryland's not been as active lately, but you know, they were active for a couple of years with our group and they found out about our team through the Health Summit. So it's definitely a great opportunity for that. So if you have any other questions, let me know, email me, text me, call me. LinkedIn me, however you want to get in, get in touch with me, let me know, and we'll, uh, so please let me know. All right. So moving on, I know Tom isn't here tonight. Uh, if anyone else had anything to say about the film festival, if they have any updates or anything to mention. I know. Um, so we, we were trying to come up with uh, kind of like a youth GIS, you know, um, what do you call it? A promotion video kind of deal for the team. Mm -hmm. And I was supposed to give you guys, you know, send you guys a few like videotaping tricks, tips and tricks. And I didn't yet, but I will this week. Um, I'm going to crunch it in with all the, the procrastination that I've been doing, but um, it'll be out this week. And I do want to ask your guys input in this meeting. Um, what are some questions that, like, you know how, like, when you l look at a team video, they're, they're answering questions, like, first of all, like, we answer, what is GIS, right? So, I'm going to ask you guys, what are some questions that we should consider, you know, putting in the video, and then um, we'll go from there. You can... Go ahead. Anyone has any questions that I think you think the video is needing to answer that people are looking for in a promo video? I believe there's um, a lot of questions that we could look at, but um, I think we should have every state attempt to answer those questions in their own terms. And then we need to get a small committee to sit down and look at all the videos either on like a zoom call or something and decide uh, which state's responses we want to use for each question and from there uh, we can put together a short film to enter into the contest. Well yeah but I think we also need to develop a storyline that uh, those questions will fit into like puzzle pieces. I, I, I don't think we should just start with random questions. Right, I totally agree with that. And, yeah. and so do you have a question that we should start with maybe? Well, I think the, the intro to GIS and what it is is a really good starting point. And um, I think we should be open to suggestions from there. Okay. <clears throat> you know, I mean, I we can answer. I mean, we can answer like five to six questions at most, I would say. But. I think one might be, um, you know, how are youth? Because I think, I think for some people, there's a, like I'd recognize this even like when we were at GIS Day, for example. People had a hard time connecting, even people who are professionals in the GIS field had a hard time connecting how are young people like, what do they have to do with GIS? <laughs> like they, they, they had a hard time making that leap. And so mm -hmm. I think, you know, answering the question, how are youth using GIS? And so, 
and that question might have um, a few samples of um, community level projects um, and maybe even a link at some point to our national team story map to give even more, you know, like it maybe in the comment section or however that works on YouTube. Yeah, There's totally a place to say, you know what I'm talking about? I totally understand. Yeah, in the description. Yeah, I would, I would toss out that we have like a prompting sentence. So like each youth on the national team answers or finishes this sentence, you know, I use GIS to blank. Um, Great idea. I think that we've seen stuff, I think we've seen stuff like that, like on commercials and whatnot. So, um, and then also, I love it, Kelly. That's that's fantastic. As as uh, Vib would say, that's lit. <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> oh, um, he did say that. Okay. And then the I'll other one that. is Vib national. National 4-H has. Um, a campaign going on right now um, with billboard signs and stuff and they're talking about uh, Dr. A you might be able to help me out with this is it just um, uh, shoot um, I'm not sure it just ran out of my head. Um, if you look at the uh, 4h.org website, they have, um, it's like getting kids to do stuff. And some of the national winners uh, have talked as well as, you know, runner up uh, for the National Youth in Action uh, awards and everything. But anyway, so it's talking about what they're doing in 4h and stuff. So um, I'm trying to think of what the tagline is, but we might be able to to tap into that as well. So I'll try to remember to maybe share that with everybody. Maybe I'll, actually I can look while we're chatting. Do you think in that sentence, um, you know, I use GIS to blank, we could incorporate something about seeing what others can't like, I can see blank that others can't and then talk about what we've done individually as a state with our maps. That's our really cool. Yeah, I totally agree, Ben. I think we all should kind of um, go back to and relate to our projects because yeah, and if we that's our evidence, that's our that power. Can't, um, then we can um, we can extend that to briefly talk about how we get to spend time each year at the Esri's user conference and how, you know, we see what other people are seeing and we want to extend that to other youth uh, so they can have the same opportunity. Okay, so if you were to make that a question, would you say what we get or what we benefit from being a part of this team? Well, I, I think that would be more of a thing we wanted to, um, I don't know if you would ab say advertise in the, the film, would be, um, you know, talking about our experiences. And then maybe we could go in and have each state briefly say one one little tidbit about their time at user conference, something that really stood out to them and that will make a lasting impact in their career. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's our like outreach. So that'll be kind of cool. Yeah. I think we have some, um, some good questions. Anyone else? Any more questions? I think, I think another, I'll oh, go ahead. I mean, Oh no, I was just, uh, I was just going to say like basically just kind of, uh, iterate on what you said, but I think, uh, for the user conference, yeah, just kind of how youth get involved and I guess, how are we involved beyond just our community, but on the national level that could be done through, you know, talk a little bit about the UC, how we go there and also, yeah, how, like what we do as a club or as a team and the different projects we get involved in. Yeah, we should you know, totally I, include the health summit. Oops. 
Oh no, go ahead. Yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Include the health summit, but go ahead. So I think another one that is important, um, and it's probably not for everybody, but and actually it may be for everybody, but um, is that career connection. So maybe how does um, how does this connect to future career opportunities or career pathways? Ooh, I forgot to mention, guys. Okay, so this November, I mean, this GIS day, Maurice was here and we were presenting, right? We were presenting our projects and then he got, he, he had a little interview during him talking about his project and he got a job opportunity right there. Wow. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. I tried to get I don't him a job. Right now, but yeah, it's pretty lit. <laughs> I said, don't you want to hire him now? But they didn't. They didn't bite. So, <laughs> oh god, it was worth a shot, right? <laughs> totally. That's right. Totally agree. Well, if that's all we have for the film festival questions, I guess we can move on to the next uh, subject. So we have monthly training. So we don't have a name list next to this, but does anyone have anything to contribute to this one specifically? I think that was more of a thing that Fran was doing, and we we discussed it last meeting, but um, they've been sending out, I think they've been sending out emails with the stuff that is being recommended for different levels of training. Uh, that's just the extent of what I remember somebody could add to it. Yeah, we kind of, we talked about what people would be interested in last month, but I never really saw the minutes come out from it. Um, I had sent a message to Tim to ask him if he uh, had shared that out on the Google Drive or could share it out. Um, but I think it, if we go back and take a look at the notes from last time, that will help fill that in. Yeah, I mean, I'd be happy to demo um what we did at our last meeting, if anybody's interested, but I'm thinking based on who I have on the call, everybody probably already knows how to do all of that. So mm -hmm. might be a exercise in futility. And so we'll, why don't we just say that um, we will refer to uh, the, the minutes and follow up content from the November meeting is that is that good enough to put in the notes for tonight yeah I think that'll be fine I think that's great um I was also thinking I know at least in our case with Unicoi County there's three of us on the national team from our county but honestly there's 10 or 15 of us that don't get the training and updates that we get on the team here so maybe if there's a way we could send out like an email blast, uh, like step by step how to do this stuff, or at least some kind of guideline for us on the national team to maybe teach some of the younger members at uh, home in our counties how to do these things. That way, uh, not only as a national team we benefit, but maybe some of our future members uh, can benefit as well. Mm hmm yeah, that's, ben, that's I'd like good. to. Okay, Ben, I would like to say something about it. Uh, you know how like we record all all of these. These are posted onto YouTube, so you can just send them the link <clears throat> to the YouTube and they'll look at it. That would unless be you want to do a more hands on. Yeah, uh, I think a more hands on approach would be more beneficial. Uh, okay. Just personally, I don't learn very well from watching videos, and I, I don't know if that's the same for other people, but uh, I think it would be easier if there was somebody there a little more knowledgeable, uh, one of us on the team that could help out, and maybe we went off the video, but I always found it easier if we had just the bullet points of step by step. Uh, I know that's time consuming, but if one of us could volunteer to do that every month just to kind of type it out and then email it to the rest of the group. That might be a little beneficial. And the great thing is there's probably nothing to type out. Um, 
all of that stuff exists and um, we could we would just need to identify what what particular objectives we wanted to work with and then um, we could get that content directly from Esri. So that's a great point. Yeah. So uh, maybe whoever was teaching it that month could find something related in an article or I, I, I really don't know exactly. I guess you'd find that on Esri's website, but that would be great. Well, all right. So if that's it for the monthly training, we can move on to the team project. So I know Clyde wasn't able to make it tonight, but does anyone have anything to mention about the team project or here? Uh, yeah, does anyone have anything to mention or contribute to this subject? I like the idea of a cascade, personally. Yeah, mm, but yeah. really fit like I don't know. Okay. Um, so is this just um, the layout is just our, our whatever the team project is. It's just showing our past maps, right? What what we do, what we're, we what we've been doing. Yeah. Yeah. I would say so. Okay. Never mind. Then that I'm trashing my idea. I thought it was something else. Yeah, I feel like Cascade is kind of like a story map. And like a story, story map. Oh, you know, yeah. actually, yeah, yeah. wait, erase sent. Never mind. I'm back in. Hold on. Could we take like a different approach? Could we like um tell our story through a cascade? Yeah. What if we had something that was more promotional instead of historical? Uh, you feel my idea, bro. Vibrion, you are. Like, oh my gosh, dude, you're the best. Yeah, a video would be great to tie in. <laughs> is this Dr. Thomas typing? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, but I, on a serious note, I think what we have, map series, is I think what Clyde has at, right now, or shortlist, one or the other. One of the, the it's other a, templates. I right? think it's a short list. It's a short list? Okay. I think yeah. so. So, yeah, I think as of right now, uploading all of them on there sounds good to me. Yeah, like, I think the, like, I guess the style it is now kind of works well for, like, the purpose of just trying to, like, databasing, recording all the different maps. I think Cascade would be, like, cool for, like, telling a story of, like, a single map or, like, going through time, but, like, for the purpose of like, I guess, record keeping, kind of just having a gallery of all our maps. I think the short list style is pretty good. Uh, maybe the cascade uh, could be something that we do after to add on to it. Uh, so we're showcasing all our maps, but then we might want to go back and have like, I don't know. Well, you can always um, go to the new ArcGIS story maps and you could embed another story map possibly you know what i'm saying you can you can embed using html and embed like like a short list yeah which yeah has just your teams yeah um, yeah and you don't even have to use new story maps to do that we've done that on a number of occasions you can embed within embed within embed if you want to yeah just keep embedding let's get this i think that's what we should do <laughs> That's even cooler than a cascade. That's the dive in story map. It's the new one that we just created. Oh. And you can keep zooming in more and more and more into map within map. That idea we is could, whack. We could do this <laughs> and we and we could do this in a looping fashion so that literally you, you could dive in infinitely. I love it. The story map. I like it too. I love it. <laughs> it's gonna take Perfect. everybody down. It. Down our rabbit hole. <laughs> it, it, that would actually be a story map hole. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I was just going to point out that um, I know the, the college youth are, are wrapping up, but then there's a good chunk of time, like, you know, six weeks or so that they're going to be off of school. Um, 
unless you're taking a winter class, but that would be a great time to have the youth work on this um, with some of the older members. This honestly sounds like a training session to me. <laughs> Because I, I've never done embedding, but Hunter has, so he knows how to do that stuff. He did embedding on Story Map Tour. Huh. Okay. I'm not sure. I, I Correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Ray, but I don't know if you really need to do HTML to, to do you it. You don't. You don't. Okay. I was going to say, when we were teaching the Cascade one um, at Cornell last summer, we just, you can just connect it with it's super simple yeah yeah copy and paste the website right <laughs> yeah and I, but i really do i think we have something that could be really unique with this infinite dive map i think i think we need to do that even if it's to say that we have the only one surely nobody else has done that right Let's do it. You never know. It sounds like something <laughs> Joseph Kursky would do. <laughs> <laughs> well, but if we say it to him, then he has to give us credit for all. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> true. Well then, I guess um, if we have nothing else to say for the team project does anyone else have anything else to mention any last notes all right so uh um i know uh hunter will be facilitating the next call yeah am i right big facts all right so yeah so yeah hunter said he'll be facilitating the next call in january so i guess if nothing else if there's nothing else to be said uh thank Other you you did an amazing job, I mean, thank you so much. Yes, great job. Uh, also on the uh, bottom there, I, I believe we would be going back in time if we said January 6, 2019. Oh. Oh, yeah, 2020. Yep, yeah. we're moving to a new year, so yay. Uh, I also I, really appreciate um, Dr. Thomas's notes tonight. They're absolutely yeah. fantastic. I, here, here. I thought I said big facts, like B F A C T S, but okay. I've, <laughs> big I've facts. Always, so <laughs> my son Andrew said, <laughs> my son Andrew said facts, F A X. So I just assumed it's facts. Sounds good to me. That's yeah, facts. yeah. F A X. What did they say about assuming? Oh lord. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess <laughs> on that note, thank you everyone for uh, tuning in. Uh, and I guess, uh, I guess, yeah, that's the end of the meeting. Thank you, everybody. All right, peace out, guys. Good night, boys. Have a good night. Good night. Not y'all. <laughs>